First off, if you were watching this video, I just want to say thank you very much for joining the inaugural edition of Pipeline Things. It was a learning experience, and I promise you we're going to get better as we do this. One thing I want to know or let you know about is that as you walk your way or work your way through this podcast, we end on some really high notes regarding Mr. Chris Hoydell's presentation at IDT Expo and the six things that you may want to think about from REN 1 or REN 3 of the Mega Rule. So again, if you can get through all the banter and stuff in the beginning, pay attention because the real meat's right at the end when we talk about Chris. Hotel. Thank you very much. I thought we counted on the counts. Okay. All right. All right. It's all right. Shout out to the people that noticed that we missed it. All right. Good afternoon. Welcome to today's edition of Pipeline Things. I'm going to be your host today, Thing 20, also known as Rat Dotson, and this is my co host. Notice co or assistant to the host, Thing 21, Christopher De Leon. So you might be wondering, since this is our inaugural edition of the Pipeline Things podcast, what we're going to do here is talk about all things that we find relevant to the pipeline industry or technical or that you might enjoy. So before we get into that, Christopher, I think it's worthwhile to tell our audience a little bit about our background. And believe it or not, I'm going to let you start first. So tell us, who is... Thing 21. Um, well, thanks for the great opening. Christopher De Leon. That one, didn't feel sincere. I want well, you to know it, that. It's because it's about what's here, oh, okay. right? Not what's here. Okay. It's what's here. It's what's here. And I'm going to write that down. That's for today. It's what's here. Right? You got you got to love what you do, guys. Passion, right? And so we have a passion for pipelines. Um, we want to keep them round, sound, and in the ground. Hashtag. Um, well, who am I? Uh, Christopher De Leon, born and raised in Houston, Texas. Uh, uh, went to the University of Houston, graduated with a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering. Uh, started off with energy transfer as a pipeline integrity engineer. Then worked with Rosen uh, on the ILI side and also integrity engineering. And now, thankfully, with uh, ADV. Really excited about the things we're doing here, all the pipeline things. And uh, looking forward to see what we're able to accomplish with this podcast. Hopefully you guys like it. Uh, my eight-year-old daughter Gemma would say, "Like, click, and subscribe." Uh, whatever that functionality is on this platform, uh, we hope you guys in here find some relevant information, entertainment, and uh, you guys keep checking in. Yeah, please. That's our request. This is the inaugural episode. Come back for episode two, please. Come back for episode we two. We hope it will be better. Yes. We're, we're trying to figure this. It out. can only go up from here. Okay. So on that note, I am thing twenty. It is really important. Thing twenty. Um, and my name is Rhett Dotson. Uh, I've got a background. I've been doing consulting work now for about 16 years, right? Started at a small consulting, consulting firm before I worked with the ILI industry for quite a while. And now I find myself here at ADV Integrity, right? So uh, in, in that, I like to say if it's weird, if it's strange, if it's happened to or been done to the pipeline, I've probably seen it. And that goes everything from pressure welds to wrinkle bends to dents to seam welds. What about bullets? I have seen bullets on a pipeline right away and saw a repair of bullets in a pipeline right away, right? So, I mean, that's, that was a, that was a good call, but yes, I've seen bullets. Do you want to try again, or is that where you ran out? <laughs> All right. So, uh, Christopher, what, 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 is, what should the audience, what kind of topics do you expect that we're going to cover here? What's our goal? So, a couple of things. Um, we believe that when you, when you call somebody for help, you got to have a relationship with them. So one of the things we want to try to do with this podcast is want you guys to get to know who we are, uh, what we like, what we don't like, a little bit about our personal lives and what we're doing professionally. So this is our podcast. We hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, the second thing is it's, you know, once you have confidence and trust in the people that you're trying to give a phone call to, hopefully we can help. So one of the things we want to try to do is bring relevant topics to this podcast. Um, by relevant, we mean maybe time sensitive something that may have happened in the industry um, and or things maybe that we notice as a trend as being consultants. So um, obviously we're always open to suggestions. If there's a topic you guys may want us to discuss, uh, you guys can always feel free to provide us with that input. So um, our goal is to do this on a regular frequency and um, do it both in video and in audio in different platforms. So hopefully you guys can choose the one you like the most and uh, keep tuning in. Gosh, you know, it just occurred to me that It'd be really awesome if we kept track of every time we said the word thing or things, we'd be like ding, ding, ding. 
think about it, but no, I don't think that flies. But we like Mario, back, remember oh, Nintendo? Oh, that would be so. Have any? Well, okay, so we have a marketing. Whoa, 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 whoa! Oh, yeah, yeah but you can't. You're introducing off-cast people like Miss Producer. That's Are you about okay. to bring them in? We have, we have, we have marketing staff here. Okay. All right. Just, just audioly, if you've ever played the original Mario, one at a time. Have you played Mario? Yes. Have you played Mario? Yes. Have you played? Yeah. Oh my God, that's fantastic. Yeah. It was really amazing because awesome. the, they don't know if it was the same person answering three times and just said it looked that way. So, you know, get going back, but Ross, we gotta let the audience in on a little joke here. Okay. I don't think most people know why it's Thing 20 and Thing 21. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah, we gotta set the stage there for that, right? So it's really important. Yeah. When we joined ADV Integrity, I was employee number 20. Mm -hmm. And Christopher was employee number 21, right? And if you know anything from the Dr. Seuss book, he spends all his time running around chasing things. And Chris Alexander, unfortunately, for better or worse, spends all of his time chasing us around or chasing our ideas around. So they coined us Thing 20 and Thing 21. And it is important because the lower the number, the better the individual overall. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So um, You guys will be the judge of that, wow. for the record. By the way, if you haven't figured it out, one of the things we hope to get across in this podcast is a little bit of humor, a little bit of banter back and forth. We're going to pass shots back and forth at each other, but Christopher, the audience should know that we really do love each other. Even though you wanted to sit further from me for mm -hmm. this episode, there's there's a connection here. There's a bond here, right? There is. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say he, it's like he's my bro, but no, nothing more than that. It's okay, like yep. there we go. All right, so. As we cover these topics, these pipeline things, relevant topics, maybe technical topics, you even opened it up to the audience, which kind of scared me. I mean, once you go to the audience, you don't know what you're gonna get back. So you're gonna be careful with that type of stuff. We need to talk about these things before, by the way. Um, what should someone expect to get from this past guy? So a large operator, let's divide it, because we like to categorize by large operator, small operator. I'm sure we have both of them out there in our audience. Large multinational pipeline operator. What are they going to take, or what would you hope that they would get from this podcast? A um, couple of things. Um, we recognize that um, human capital is a, is a big challenge right now, almost an in industry, right? So all resources are finite, and we're trying to find that balance. And so we see um, a lot of organizations trying to cope with change and manage change. And so if you're a, a larger organization, you're probably having some of your staff, some of your resources changing responsibilities or you're in a recruitment phase where you're bringing in new talent to address the silver tsunami that we've been hearing for a while. Um, so if, if you're part of that staff, level of staff in a multinational organization, you're probably gonna get to uh, use this as an opportunity to be aware of things and um, also learn things technically. So uh, we do try to keep a balance of things that are programmatic, but then we also wanna get down to some of the nitty gritty and some type case study things. So if you're a large organization, that's one way that uh, that, that you may take advantage of, of this podcast and, and video cast. Yeah, I think the large multinationals will probably feel a lot of our topics be very familiar. Like, you know, they might have an entire department devoted to the threat of SEC or maybe even yeah. entire geohazards department that stood up. But we really hope that from that, you know, you're gonna derive maybe something that you haven't heard of before, maybe a little bit of a new technique, maybe exposure in a different way will be very good for you. You know, so one of the other things is, I'm, I mean, I am learning on the fly on this podcast and Miss Producer has let us know that we have to be very careful about bringing in things that y'all might not be aware of. So cut us some grace if we use something, maybe even leave us a show note. If, if you noted that we, we brought somebody or introduced somebody that you're not familiar with, please leave us that and we'll address it in future episodes. And again, cut us some grace. Um, Miss Producer's being very, very helpful for us. Um, so now that we've addressed a large multinational, let's think smaller operator, right? So I like to group this, I mean, maybe you're thinking, uh, your operator that's got you know one, maybe two people in the entire integrity department, maybe yeah. covering anywhere from 500 to 1,000 miles of regulated pipeline. Yeah, that's a, that's a really a niche um, role that, that you may have if you work for an operator where you have um, substantial number of miles and, and you're, you're championing this um, between in a small team or, or just a couple of people. Um, I think one of the things that, that you'll be able to take advantage of this podcast, videocast from is it's um, getting good references to things. Um, an example of that is it's let's just say um, you discover a specific threat on your pipeline or the threat on a pipeline finds you. 
Um, and because of the amount of work, maybe you just don't have the ability to go to all the conferences or keep track of all the recent technical publications, whether it be IPC, PPIM, you know, PHMSA's R&D forum, um, a GPAC meeting. Um, one of our goals is to try to keep relevant and time sensitive topics as part of this. And so we'll do our best to capture some of those that we think um, are, are going to be useful to you. Um, so a good example of that is it's let's say you know you find um, that that you have a new threat with wrinkle bends and um, maybe just per chance maybe one of the topics that we have. So when you search our podcast, maybe you can search wrinkle bends, and uh, we'll do our best to kind of pull things from that are historical and more relevant, time sensitive, put in some case studies and technical information so that you can you know, condense a lot of information in 15 to 20 minutes. So that's one example of how if you're a small integrity team or a small team in a pipeline company, how you may take advantage of this. Yeah, absolutely. I think you're gonna hear us talk about topics that may, uh, hopefully haven't found you and maybe will never find you. But in the event they do, uh, I think it'll be really helpful. You can pull some good information here, uh, maybe even figure out how you can do preliminary risk assessment or really you know, get a top-down look at that threat without having to invest a lot of resources. Or if you ever do, you know, maybe you know who to pick up the phone and call. So I definitely really like that. So yeah, call, call thing 21. Uh, we'll go with that. Um, unless it's a wrinkle bin, then you should definitely call me. <laughs> Uh, the, the audience is either confused or entertained right now. It's really difficult to if determine which one. If you're watching this and you've oh, never God. met us, God bless you. Like We appreciate your attention. Amen. It, it will get better, we promise. It, it can get only go up from here. You know one thing I realized? We don't have a show clock right now, so I have no idea. If we've been on for 15 minutes, 30 minutes, yeah. 45, the audience could be asleep right now. I have no idea. We're just going to keep plowing through. All right. Uh, <laughs> what about everyone else? What should your mom hope to get from this, this podcast? Is your mom going to listen to this My podcast? My mom is not going to listen to this oh, podcast. Boy. Mom, I would like you to listen to this podcast for me because I don't think anybody in my family actually knows what I do, Chris. Yeah. You know, actually I think everyone else, you should share this with non-pipeline related people because you know how many people have no idea how critical or expansive the pipeline infrastructure is in the United States? That's... I mean, think about that trip we made the other day where we were talking to the Uber driver. Yeah. And, and Christopher, you said, yeah, you know, there's a pipeline. And he goes, well, what is there? Gotta be like, what, one or two pipelines in Florida? And like one or two pipelines, buddy. They like crisscross, like you have no idea. So. You know, I think broad exposure to, uh, maybe you get more from the entertainment factor than the technical content, but hopefully, I think for everyone else out there, there's something you can latch on to from this podcast. So, the other thing you should expect from us, I'll say, is we're gonna have guests from time to time. We cannot let you know who those guests are right now because we need to protect the innocent. But, you know, we're gonna have some anonymous guests that you may never see, like Miss Producer. She will always be out there. And then we'll have some other ones. We might bring Chris Alexander maybe on here one day. He won't have a funny name, but other people might have a funny name. And so again, I think really, you know, look forward to that in the future. Hi, my name is Chris Alexander and I'm president and founder of ADV Integrity. And we are the proud sponsors of the Pipeline Things podcast led by Rhett Dotson and Christopher DeLeon. In that podcast, they're gonna be talking about things like integrity management, uh, pretty much anything related to pipelines, including regulations, technology, and uh, anything that you would need to know. They're also gonna be talking about current events. Um, for those of you that don't know anything about ADV Integrity, we're a consulting company. We do uh, full-scale testing. I'm actually here in the lab and really high-end engineering to serve the pipeline industry. And we would love to hear from you. and really excited about being sponsors of the Pipeline Things podcast. All right, so today's topic. Yeah. We do want to leave the audience, if you're still with us, and I know you're still with us. We, we so. are. Uh, we're going to cover something that we actually just wrapped up recently, yeah. which is IDT Expo. Chris, I just said three letters, IDT Expo. Most people on this, this, that are watching this right now might not have any idea what it is we're talking about. So can you tell in briefly, and I know you, you struggle with brevity. Okay. So briefly, what is IDT Expo and what did they miss if they weren't there? IDT Expo, um, if you spend any time in the pipeline industry, we love acronyms. So IDT represents Innovation, Design, and Technology Expo. And the objective of the IDT Expo is to bring service providers um, that focus on products and services along with the end user customers and also um, keeping a little bit of a business feel to it. We like to bring in other people who may be interested in the pipeline industry and how to get in from a business perspective. 
So, uh, what what did you miss at our recent IDT Expo? Well, a couple of things. Are you asking the questions, or am I asking? Because you just asked the question, you're going to answer it yourself now. I'm pretty sure you asked me in breath to explain what the IDT Expo was. So you already got. Can you guys confirm that? I, I'm pretty I sure did. I, but brief would have been you extended brief. Can you tell the audience what they missed from the IDT Expo? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I feel, I, wow. Okay. So if you missed uh, IDT Expo. Uh, what we what we had an opportunity to do is we, we had we had a couple speakers and normally what we like to structure it is we'll ask for a, a guest speaker to come in and touch on each one of those three topics from their own perspective either be the niche business that they're in um, their unique selling point or uh, maybe a story or journey in how they got to where they are as an organization and um, so for for the I for innovation uh, we had Mr. Jeff Allen from Esri come in and talk about innovation and how important um, software platforms are to uh, to begin to serve as a digital twin. You know, he kind of summarized that, you know, GIS kind of started in pipelines as a departmental yeah. tool and then it expanded to really be more an enterprise tool and they're currently on that journey of helping make data available in a platform so that, you know, based on the needs that you have, they're able to connect those needs and provide uh, uh, the end user, in most case pipeline operators with uh, and with the services or, or data integrated in the way they need. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm going to pause you just a moment yeah. because really, Jeff's presentation knocked it out of the park. The, we keep saying it, the content was good, and I hope Jeff's listening, but the slides, the slides, the slides from slides Jeff were good. phenomenal. Kudos to his marketing department. Those might be the cleanest slides I've ever seen in my really life. But yeah, his content, and he really hit, you know, just I, I'm going to touch briefly on something that struck me that I think everybody knows, which is the disconnect between an operator's GIS department and their integrity department. Yeah. And again, we can't have time to cover everything he did there, but he really brought that to light. And I think it's something that if you're there and you have a GIS department, you probably know exactly what we're talking about Absolutely. right now. And our second presenter was Simone Belmar from MMT. MMT. And uh, tell us a little bit, what, what did you take from Simone? Yeah, so he focused on the D in IDT. He focused on design and uh, he walked us through that journey of, um, how important design is, right? So when you go from a startup company um, with you know uh, seed money from different type of investors and you got a great idea, how you know at first your prototype is very functional, it focuses on um, the importance of the problem you're trying to solve, so like accuracy, yeah, right. And then he kind of took us through this journey, or MMT did. They took us through this journey through how you 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 had something functional that worked. But then as you're trying to evolve it, you're trying to innovate and, and cater to the end user, you need to be careful about getting bad input, right? So yeah. you may have some customers say, oh, this is the most important. So you go and you, you focus on one thing, but then you realize, well, maybe that wasn't really, you know, um, the path you should have taken. So then you got to correct. And then that whole life journey of, of the product getting from what you originally needed to, to ultimately what the customer will pay for, right? To solve their problem. So that was a really neat conversation. Yeah, it, it absolutely was. I mean, his, his, what I like to refer to as a war story. I mean, I really love how he talked about the dark years. That was what stuck to me from that was he said the dark years of development with the fish tank yeah. from, from MMT. Again, if you missed it, I really hope you're going to be at next year's event or the next quarter's event. It was fabulous. So jump in. Christopher, tell us a little bit about our third speaker at IDT Expo, if you don't mind. Sure. So it was uh, presented by Baker Hughes, Mr. Hotham, and the focus was technology. And um, what he did a really good job of is show us how um, technology has changed uh, humanity kind of across the, the mm -hmm. timeline, right? Everything from the printing press to the wheel. And a couple of things that he highlighted which were really neat is um, how technology and innovation change our ability to be a society like humanity and, and our quality of life. And I thought that was really important. And I think the other thing that he talked about was um, the energy demand that we're going to have and how mm. populations are growing, right? So us being in oil and gas, you know, focusing on pipelines, you know, we're the conduit of fuel um, to produce energy. Um, he made a really good point of saying that it's important to one, understand that energy demand is only going to grow. Yes. And two, one of the really cool concepts that he brought up was this idea of collaboration. Right, and so technology and the internet are really enabling collaboration. So he says the energy demand is growing faster than than what, the way we're producing energy and solving some of our problems at the rate that we're solving those. And so he suggested, you know, if we can collaborate better and figure out how to collaborate and, and leverage our IP and our resources, that we'll probably be able to end up in the end goal of serving um, 
serving our, our, our world with the energy demand that it needs. Yeah, so it, you know, again, that whole collaboration just really speaks to what IDT Expo was out about. Absolutely, you know, so again, you've heard our first three speakers now, and now I'm gonna get right, the fourth speaker we had, uh, who I think a lot of our audience is going to find some uh, interest in, I will mm -hmm. say was Mr. Chris Waddell with Grit or FEMSA. Yeah. And he gave us a little bit about REN1 and REN3 of the updated gas rule. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, again, tell us what tell us what you brought away from that. And again, I think a lot of the audience, those yeah. large, small gas operators random are going to know about that. Listeners. For random listeners, if you don't know what the updated gas rule is, you should go read all of CFR 192. Don't, so don't a, do that. A couple of things. You know, what, what we mentioned earlier was um, we use a lot of acronyms in, mm. in the pipeline industry. So I'll, I'll, I'll say a couple of things. So the GRIT is basically the team that FEMSA, our regulatory body under the Department of Transportation that focuses on pipeline and hazardous materials, they formed a team that's focused on rolling out the, the new gas rule that was broken up in three parts. And that team is called, is acronym GRIT. Right, gas regulatory implementation team. And so Mr. Chris Hoydell is a part of that team. He's a senior advisor at FEMSA. Um, and so the GRIT is, is really doing a, a good job of, of creating awareness and making information available to the pipeline industry about uh, the updated gas rule. And uh, what we had the privilege of, of having him do in his, in his, I think he said this was his last presentation as a federal employee, mm. so we wish you best Mr. Hoydell, uh, thank you for, for your service to the pipeline industry and uh, obviously I'm sure we'll see you around. But to his presentation, um, he focused on two topics, part one or REN one of, of the updated gas rule. Do you know what REN stands for? I still don't know what REN actually stands for. I gotta be for. honest with you, I'm not sure if I've looked at it yet. If anybody in the audience knows what REN means, because they keep we keep using that word and I keep throwing, I don't know if it's actually R-I-N, R-E-N. You know what I think of though? Yeah. REN and Stimpy. Yeah. Did, you, did I, you ever watch that show? You yeah, have no idea what I'm talking I know about. It is, but that, that wasn't my type of humor. Yeah, sorry. I feel like that was a yeah, I feel like that was a small yeah. subtle shot there. Yeah. Anyway, okay, uh, Ren I'm one, like Ren three. Kind of guy, you know? I, I so like I'm, I'm gonna turtle. take a guess and say it's uh, something to similar to regulatory identification number. Mm, would be probably right. I guess. But I'm, somebody I'm, out there, correct us, yeah, please. Correct Absolutely. Us. So, so back to, so uh, he, he highlighted some of the learnings from REN1, uh, which has been out since, since last year, and, and there's a couple of things that, that operators should have put in place and put in motion and accomplished since its, um, since its um, codification. And then he also touched a little bit around uh, on REN3, which is the, the, the gas gathering rule. And um, a big takeaway from there that I wanted to share was, um, you know, over the last year or so, uh, the GRIT has done mock inspections, so thanks to all those operators, uh, pipeline operators that, you know, raised their hand when, when FEMSA asked for um, pipeline operators to step forward and, and work with the GRIT to, to go through some of these new requirements and, and understand what the FAQs, frequently asked questions, are trying to address. So uh, as a result of those five and, and ongoing um, inspections, live inspections that are happening, uh, Chris, you know, you know, was able to share some information with us at, at the at the presentation that he gave, and he called it the big six compliance concerns. Yeah. By the way, you know, I'm, I'm sure whenever we do the edit of this video, as you introduce each of these big six compliance concerns, they're going to scroll underneath us like a 1990s newsreel. And for those of you who aren't watching the actual podcast. Um, and you're just listening, yeah. uh, we'll definitely have it in the show notes what these big six are. So if we talk too fast, Chris says I talk too fast, don't worry, we're gonna make sure you get the material. Wait, but I, I thought in podcast you can change the speed so they can slow us down. Yeah, see, and I, if or you're crazy, really fast yeah, I listen to most of mine on 1.5, but I don't know, I'm real curious what I probably sound like on 1.5. You know, so. again, I grew up in Houston, so we like to slow things down. Well, I grew up in Louisiana, I don't know what, how that's relevant to any of this, but let's get back to the big six here. And this isn't like big six hero or big hero six, this is big six, let's go. You know, that's a great movie. It was a fabulous movie, it but is. our audience is probably not interested in that today. The little robots that Focus. Hero developed, that Focus. was fantastic. Focus, big six, give me number one. The, the nanobots. No, Miss Producer is not going to be okay with this. Okay, so the big six. Uh, the first one was MEOP reconfirmation applicability. Big, big focus there. Mm. 
Um, obviously, I think MLP reconfirmation is probably um, the most discussed topic of RIN 1 or Part 1 of the new gas rule. And specifically, what, what Mr. Hoydell tried to highlight was the use of previous subpart J tests on grandfathered pipes to satisfy reconfirmation method one. Right, and this really speaks to, I think the majority of the people, if you've read the updated gas rule, and mm -hmm. particularly that section on MAOP reconfirmation, yeah. why would you need to reconfirm the MAOP of a pipeline that had a subpart J pro, a hydro test was a very logical question. Yes. And so tell us a little about that. It speaks directly to grandfathered pipe. And again, I don't think we have time in this episode to get into all that, yes. but real quick, where does this concern fit for operators? So I think what's important is with anything, whenever there's new regulation, interpretation mm. is, is based on um, the person that is, is defending their position. And I think that's, that's very valid, right? Uh, I once heard the term argumentation. And as much as we, we, we maybe don't like that root word of argue, I do think that there is a mm. component and part of our process uh, and the relationship that we have between operators and, and regulators to to ensure that there's a common understanding. And, and the way I'll answer that is it's, that's what the FAQs are for. And if anything, I think what we encourage is for you to reach out to your regulators and make sure that you're, you're, you're having a discussion with them about your specific pipelines and your interpretation of the rule. Um, I think right now this is um, what we want to do is just highlight the importance of MAOP reconfirmation and, and this whole concept of uh, when is method one satisfied or appropriate. So when you read code, typically there's a component of applicability. Like most codes start with applicability. So it's really important to understand that. And a couple of pointers are the 600 series of um, 192, which is where we're gonna see um, requirements on, on operating at a specific pressure. And then also requirements in the 500 series. So those are two good pointers to look at. And um, if you, you want to talk about it at length, I think this is an opportunity for you guys to give us a call about your unique situation or, you know, have a discussion you know, with your regulator. Honestly, I feel like you could probably do a whole, we could probably do a whole separate show on yeah. each of the six topics here, like six separate yeah, shows. Okay. Yeah. So it, again, just appreciate that in the context of what Mr. Hoydell was presenting. It's incredibly valuable to be there. Um, but the second topic. Well, hold on. I, I, I do want to give a takeaway. So one thing that I will say is because this whole component of MLP reconfirmation is a huge topic. There's a lot of discussion going yes. on behind the scenes, meaning um, that's not public yet. It's operators digesting this and working with FIMSA on interpretations. So if this is something that, that you're also, um, you have it written down as a to-do or something to understand that's important to you, I really encourage you to start reaching out and, and trying to understand what the appropriate interpretation is. This is a big one and I think we are going to see some some more information presented by the grit here in the near future in the form of an FAQ or something. So keep your eyes out for that. Yeah, and, and bullet point number two, this one actually did surprise yeah. us both a little bit, was the discussion of non-TVC hydro tests, right? So yeah. real quick, what was your takeaway from that point number two? Um, I think uh, this is my takeaway. Um, Mr. Hoydell did a good job of saying that uh, having records that are complete, right? So TVC, traceable, verifiable, and complete, um, that's a process and a lot of operators have been doing that for a long time and again there's that rule that's there's that 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 gray space of interpretation between what's traceable what's verifiable and what's complete one of the things that I would encourage is one there's a lot of consultants and service providers that have been doing this a lot for a long time reach out and ask for help for interpretation because um, I do think that FIMS has done a great job um, in, in certain situations to allow operators to to operate safely and apply the right resources where needed in some of this gray space, if that makes sense, right? So if you got a lot of records and maybe it's missing a, a minute detail on the record, I, I think you can approach FIMS and say, hey, here's my record, um, here's how I'm trying to handle this, what, what do you think? Yeah, and then what about the third one? The third one is opportunistic dig definition and procedures. And I think this is a great one. Um, basically, when you're doing uh, material, re, uh, material properties verification, which is another big part of RIN 1, uh, one of the things that, that the, the code says in 192.607 is, is that if you expose the pipe under certain circumstances, you should opportunistically verify the pipeline materials, right? Long seam, wall thickness, um, outside diameter of the pipe, OD, um, yield strength slash grade, and, and where applicable. Um, um, fracture toughness through CVN, etc. 
Yeah, you know, and I feel like that conversation around opportunistic just continues mm -hmm. to go back and forth, right? You know, I think with operators defining it one way and uh, maybe regulatory wanting to see it a different way. Again, I'd say that there's still lots of room to flesh that out if you haven't fleshed that out and yet. The, the you, big takeaway there, which I will say is again, lots of gray space there, but I think that what, what, what Chris- There's gray to, space in a black and white rule. Yeah. You need to hear that. Yes. There is, but but you know what? It's not one of the six, but he did end his presentation kind of on RIN 1 with, you know, um, 192.18 is um, alternate process or no objection protocol, and I think what they really encouraged operators to do is document this stuff and approach them uh, for comment and for no objection. So as it relates to opportunistic digs, write it down. I think, again, that, that's point number three. Write it down, approach FEMSA, and, and engage in that conversation. Yeah, you know what? So I just had a, a massive revelation came to me. Yeah. There's going to be a total cliffhanger here. Episode number one is going to end on three of the six <laughs> parts from the grid presentation. So if you want to know more about what Chris Hoydell said and the six big components that he talked about, you're going to have to come back for episode number two to catch the rest of that. Because I'm very quickly realizing that some of these are heavy and we're gonna need a little more humor. Plus, Miss oh. Producer is telling me that this is a really good time to end our podcast. So again, I really hope that you've enjoyed the time you spent with Thing 20 and Thing 21 today on our inaugural edition of Pipeline Things. We look forward to being back with you in our next episode. And again, remember, if you enjoyed this, please like or subscribe, pass it on to your friends, to those small operators, large operators, family members. They need to know about the pipeline industry too. And we look forward to seeing you back next time. Thank you very much.